Hi guys, it's Matt here from Oathwire, and we have a new segment today. And what is that? It's Frostgrave. As you know, we've been branching out uh, with our guests and with our games. Uh, and so today I would like to introduce Sal. Sal, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I am Cement Sol. I play all kinds of systems and I do have uh, interest in Frostgrave in particular. I played uh, three campaigns of it so far and I quite enjoy the system. Excellent. Uh, you also have a cool little YouTube channel, I believe. Yes, that is right. I do uh, reviews of independent war games in particular on my channel, trying to grow it at the moment. It is an interesting exercise to say the least. It is, and I'm going to put your link down here. Guys, have a look underneath in the description. Go and have a look. Go and look at his work. It is good. I have had a look because I was nosy when you said <laughs> come on. So there's a lot of one page rule stuff on there and lots of actual stuff on there. So not just one page rules, but uh, yeah, it's really good. So uh, we are going to move on and we are moving into the news. So what is new? Do you know what's new? I don't know what's new. Uh, so we have co coming out uh, a new expansion for uh, Frostgrave and that's the Blood Legacy Vampires versus Giants. We were just talking about that weren't we Sal? So it looks like it's going to be quite interesting. Yeah, Giants as a faction is a very interesting choice. This is I think the first time I have seen them uh, represented this much in a skirmish game no less. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I can't think of any they're always you always have like a giant in the middle of a, in a battle you've seen <laughs> vampires i want to see you know how does a vampire it'd be a bit like the hulk and uh loki in uh in the in the avengers when hulk mm. smash and he smashes <laughs> him around in the, the avengers tower <laughs> i think that's that's in my head anyway <laughs> mm. but that, uh, i imagine good. there's there's good uh, modeling opportunities here yeah. for like medium-sized models are going into larger size models it's interesting yeah. it's interesting yeah i think there's a lot of bits and pieces out there i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know if north star actually do any uh giants i'd have to go and mm -hmm. have a look maybe cobblestone's got a few on there or something but i know there's lots out there so i'm sure people will be printing stuff up and uh, uh mm -hmm. buying bits and pieces maybe the uh ones from man uh, mantic for kings of war slightly big i would suggest uh, about two foot tall or something stupid like that. <laughs> i can't remember how big it is it's big anyway 12 yeah. inches or something like that maybe a bit big for a frost grave game but yeah, yeah looks pretty cool a big big one it's quite large it's quite yeah, large yeah. yeah i think it's probably big as some of the uh terrain that you can buy at the official frost gray terrain <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. <laughs> right well, i think very good gonna... set piece there just yeah, like yeah. a big giant in the center yeah and uh yeah so that i'm looking forward to that um i have got that on pre-order so that that will be landing at some point i'll probably uh try and get that i haven't played all the other campaigns yet though so uh, it'll be on the in the list mm -hmm. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, um, I don't think there's anything much else going on. Uh, any painting that you've been doing any for Frostgrave? Anything new on your painting table, Frostgrave? Uh, for Frostgrave, I was doing some trees, just nice. some uh, nice generic dead trees for my uh, Blasted Wasteland table board. Cool. Although when I play, I play with a couple of brothers who have an insane amount of terrain done up. Um, so I usually just turn up with my models, which is very handy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they turn up with literal stacked crates of terrain. It's great. Oh. So we have a lot of options. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I've cool. just literally made some t trees stuff as well, covered in snow and stuff like that. And then I was doing mm -hmm. some uh, for um, Rangers of the Shadow Deep as well. So um, I just finished those off, which was pretty cool. I'm happy with them. I'm going to do some more of them because they're super easy and look really cool. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. OK, so we're going to move on into our main topic for this afternoon, this evening or this morning, depending where you are. Uh, <laughs> and that is going to be campaign regression in Frostgrave. So, so you, you brought the subject up, so I am going to hand it over to you to start and I will interject along the way and go. Mm -hmm, uh -huh, uh -huh. No, we were going to have a proper chat about it, but uh, yeah. If I can hand that over to you and, and you can kick us off. 
Okay, sure. So Frostgrave is a very interesting piece of design in that it takes the warband format of a skirmish campaign and pairs it down into some very interesting basics. So the from first edition in particular, the biggest change I'd say it did compared to its uh uh, its contemporaries in Mordheim and Necromunda would be to consolidate all the the, the uh, sorry the progression into the main character, so to speak, into yes. your wizard. Yes. Because none of your minions per se could progress in Frostgrave first edition. I believe second edition would give you options for progressing them in one of the splat books, possibly not in the core book. No, on the core book, no, mm -hmm. no, 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 there's still yeah. the same, um, yeah, your gang members or your warband men members stay as is. You can upgrade mm -hmm. them with a few, you know, weapons and bits and pieces. That's true, yeah. 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 Uh, one of the th main differences I know from second edition was uh, the making the thugs free. Yes. Because going into the actual uh minions they are they feel more like an extension of your main character than they are like characters themselves like if, if you view your list your warband as a singular unit your minions become your like your list building options yeah so you could compare it to say a deck because you only have so many slots Yes, that's right. You yeah, mm -hmm. still only get still only have the eight slots uh, in second edition for those being specialists. Mm -hmm. And those specialists are the ones you can customize to a degree, mm. but most of the progression will be consolidated into your wizard and to an extent into your apprentice. Yes, the right. apprentice is interesting because it is basically just your wizard, but a shoddier. It's yeah. just, a, it's it literally is. Just it the is, wizard is, minus yeah. X. It's, yeah. it's really oh, interesting. Minus two, basically. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it gets the uh, the access to the same amount, uh, the same, same kinds of spells, mm -hmm. but it will probably fail them if it attempts to cast them. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure what exactly the, like, the design goal is with the Apprentice. I've never been able to intuit it. Because in in Frostgrave goes Archipelago, that's like expanded upon because the apprentice there, the apprentice equivalent, can sort of differentiate itself from the wizard. But in yeah. Frostgrave, the apprentice is beholden to the wizard. He is, that's so right. Yeah. It uh the wizard's progression will directly influence the apprentice's progression. Yeah, it, it, it changed it in Stargrave as well, so just a bit, a bit like Ghost Ark, but okay. Uh -huh. yeah. So you have you have captain and your first mate, so you'd be able to you can uh, with the first mate you can give him new levels and or uh -huh. you can you can promote either or either. So it's just and you can give him different skills, a whole different skill bracket as well. So yeah, yeah. So the wizard is a spellcaster, of course. Yes. Uh, this is super apparent, especially if you play Ghost Archipelago. The power differential, so to speak, and what the wizard can do in its activation is quite apparent. And it's interesting because wizards gain experience through casting spells in Frostgrave. They gain they experience through casting spells, through personally taking down models, either uh, models from the opposing warbed or from the environment, depending on scenario, and they gain experience from taking home treasure. So Frostgrave does not incentivize fighting per se. It rewards fighting if your wizard manages to actually smack something down or spell cast something down. Yes. But that usually won't be the case because most of the fighting will be done by your uh, by your minions mm -hmm. by your followers and Definitely. the followers they they die often in frost <laughs> they do they have a very good they really do die mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be a bloodbath because <laughs> uh -huh. the, the range of numbers in this game is quite uh, swingy it's, it's yeah, that's yeah. something the system is known for yes definitely 
uh, I've had somebody call it, liken it to like uh, competitive D and D, which is an yeah. interesting comparison. Yeah, I suppose it is actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you could definitely. I mean, that's kind of what got me into Joe's games with which was Rangers, and I just mm-hmm. like this has a complete D and D feel to it, and uh, mm. I think you definitely get that out of Frostgrave as well. I'm sure I haven't spoken to Joe about it, but I'm sure. D and D had a very similar age to me, so I'm sure it had a similar effect on him as uh, as it did me. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, my personal uh, like knee jerk take on it was uh, this is a looting game, not so much a dueling game uh, in the same manner uh, other skirmish games will be, because it puts such a big focus on the loot on the table and grabbing and specifically running off with the loot on the table. Yes. Uh, I've seen this in maybe Gorka Morka, although with Gorka Morka, it's more scenario specific. With Frostgrave, the loot is always there. There's always treasure on the board, unless you're doing some really specific scenarios. Yeah. So, no, so the, 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 so. Yeah. the mentality like going into it is quite different because you're not necessarily looking to defeat each other to grind each other into the ground in most cases with war games you are looking to make off with something that is on the board so you're weighing the risk and reward quite differently because so much of the progression which is why you come in to play a campaign in the first place for that linked uh, experience uh, defined in context by progression it is tied to the objective of running off with the loot on the board no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, that, that that's just a really, really interesting uh, choice for design. It's it's very considered. And another thing to look at would be the spells, because the way to quote unquote win Frostgrave through just sheer progression, to through sheer getting numbers up. Is to cast the ultimate spell. I'm not sure if that stayed for second edition. I think it has. Yeah, yeah. But the idea there is to get your wizard good enough at casting where he basically can land a 20, an actual 20 on the roll, and get, get off an insanely difficult to cast spell. And that wins you the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you go to Lich Lord, if you've played all the games through in the, the original book and then you get to the to mm-hmm. that one, you know, you've got the one where you can cast up to become a lich uh, king or uh, wizard, so which needs, yeah, yeah. An, needs the 20. So, you know, mm-hmm. if, you, if you're progressing through the campaign book, you can definitely do that a hell of a lot easier if you start lich lord from as a level one wizard. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know anybody that's done that, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's interesting because here's the thing with these classical like link play warband campaigns they tend to go real long like my campaigns of frostgrave lasted about three months each yes and nobody casted the transcendent spell that was not going to happen because to actually get to that point i'd say you'd need to play at least five months weekly maybe depends depends on the rate of your experience gain depends if you like stay on the board casting spells grinding up your xp yes but it is nice to have that end game goal because I've been like w- workshopping an essay on these kinds of campaigns, and one of my main criticisms of them is they do not define an end. Right. Like they just expect people to play indefinitely. Yes. Uh, that was one of my criticisms of Rain in Hell when I gave it a review. And I compared it directly to Frostgrave, which makes a point to give you a defined end. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, the, all of the campaign books, you know, uh, that Joe's released or Osprey's released. I mean, it's, if you play the basic book, I mean, the premise I I, I get it from there. They've re- right. Here's the here's the base book. Okay, he's already probably written one or two um, supplements for it. So you've got those ca- those campaigns already written. Uh, mm-hmm. So and then they release them so that, that you get to use to play in the game and then you buy and you know, it, it makes sense for them because obviously they're going to yeah. get that, you know, that keep that interest flowing for the whole Definitely. system, uh-huh. but, you know, and Joe's got it all in his head and, and mind and, and flowing that. But, you know, if you if you just had the book and you said, right, OK, 
you know, we're just going to play this for the next six months. Well, you wouldn't, would you? You there would people be like, yeah, yeah I need to not play this campaign anymore because it's not very interesting. Uh -huh. We played the same twelve battles over and over yeah. and over and over again. So, uh, yeah, I've definitely felt that there is like a very finite amount of games you can get out of a single war band before yes. you start getting tired of it because you yeah, played yeah, it yeah. for so long. Yeah, no, absolutely. I uh, got um, my current war band is a um summoner so uh -huh. he's a summoner and you know i'm far just i i, I firing imps all over the place and <laughs> and casting demons because why not uh, uh -huh. and i, I kind of don't really do much else with him he can do yeah. other bits and pieces but imps is a really good spell to have you get it near yeah. to the other guys it just annoys them and then if you can, if you can get that like you said you build up the um my xp so i can get a decent roll and i'm casting a major demon or a minor demon and it mm -hmm. you know and that's what i'm aiming for get that major demon on the table every time at the beginning of the game the game because yeah. i've got because i've got a summoning circle uh, i put pop that onto the table and guess what <laughs> it's, it's, prob <laughs> it's problematic for the other player yeah, so, yeah but that, first... and they don't want to play me so my first go i actually also had a summoner Yes. Uh, probably a very similar build because mechanically it is one of the more uh, engaging builds for the for the witch class, I believe. Yes, yes. I remember I was casting imps a lot. Yeah. And I was casting mud. And I was casting mud with the intent of basically farming the XP, especially at the yeah. end of the game. Yeah, that's definitely. Because mm. if, you, if you take glass, you, you'll be pretty much locked into a certain set of spells. So every... Wizard will have a very not really close in, but you'll have a way to progress that will be very different from other wizards. Yeah, like it can be crazy how different your wizards can be. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was playing that first Frostgrave game with somebody who ran a enchanter. All right, yeah. And they were playing it like a ghost archipelago a ghost archipelago game so it was super combat heavy for them okay. on the wizard as well as on their minions they were just getting uh lots of buffs on so they were more keen on getting into combat than the other uh war bands i also had one which was an illusionist where they had four archers on their team and that's always fun to come up against yeah yeah that's why you definitely and, need some high terrain there then just to break them mm -hmm. up from doing anything like that. Another one what, which was also a summoning build, but they were running dwarves as their models, and they had like the, the Keg Golem from Malifal. All right, that was yeah, a yeah. really cool warband as well. But they were, a, I think they were a summoner enchanter. Like the, the breadth of what people can do is really cool, because... and we weren't all interacting with each other so we weren't like coordinating oh i'm gonna do this and you're gonna do this it just yeah. came up naturally yeah because i was running goblins so like model wise i was running goblins yeah. so i wanted to lean into their like goblin -y theme because i just pulled them out of my warhammer army as you oh, do right. with these model agnostic yeah. games yeah yeah, yeah. No, absolutely that's, the, that's uh, yeah that's the though i went and bought a load of frostcrow stuff because Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, I came from a historical background, so mm, I see, most, I see. most of my figures uh, just didn't, well, most of them were German from World War Two in 15 or 28 mil, so there's yeah. not, many, <laughs> not many 28 mil um, Waffen SS running around in Fosco, so uh, <laughs> yeah. I had to go and buy some new figures, but that's cool, mm -hmm. but I, I bought what I liked, so uh, it just happened it was a lot of it it was uh, uh from north star but i've got other stuff now so yeah uh, in terms of uh the other side of progression because there are two resources in frostgrave there is xp which we've yes. been talking about and there is gold yes now gold is of course also tied into the running in and uh, making off with the loot there are <laughs> comprehensive rolling tables on frostgrave for loot there is a lot and there is also a lot of things to buy. Yes. Uh, this is the more liquid of the resources because there's a lot more options on spending it on, and they are also a lot more impermanent. Uh, of interest here are, for me, are the, the potions, the consumables, because 
I don't think a lot of uh, campaign games do consumables too well, but Frostgrave does, uh, per, what, what do you call this, per battle bonuses, like you yes. use them once, yeah, they sure. gain a really solid bonus for the battle, yeah. and then they wear off. Yes. So that tendency is like, oh, I've got the shiny thing, I'm going to use it immediately. Because yeah. you, you, you do tend to forget it if you don't like write it down and immediately use it. Yeah, uh, I've done that. <laughs> I, I the last two games I played, uh, I had a potion of rejuvenation, which I kept mm-hmm. on forgetting that I had. I, I had didn't. I had on my apprentice. I gave it to my apprentice, and it got down to the end, nearly dying. And I was like, "Hang on!" And I got got ran him off the table or hit him, or so, and he couldn't do anything. And I was like, oh keep forgetting yeah, that's yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some of these, like the Elixir of Life, that will save you from a, a really bad time if you have it in your pocket. Uh-huh, uh-huh. As well, like something like the Potion of Teleportation, which you can just use to, okay, I'm gonna uh, gap now, please, once yes. you get the central treasure on one of your dudes. Yeah, yeah, or definitely. the Explosive Cocktail, which could do absolutely nothing or could absolutely wreck the other guy on a good roll. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In the, yeah. It just that's nice and swingy. Like m- most of the, I think all of these are really well considered because even just the basic potion of healing, five lost health is a lot to restore in this game. Especially when you're wounded and you're suffering from that uh, that optional debuff for being wounded. Yeah, you yeah. Just pop that and you're all good again, and five can be deceptively hard to get rid of, given how swingy the game is. Yeah, definitely. So it like imbues you with that hope of oh maybe maybe if I use this right here I'll still last a little bit longer. <laughs> I just hang on to. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's also the the base system that's also a progression that will be where most of your money goes. Yes, because those uh, base upgrades do cost a fair bit. I, do. I remember trying to go for the kennels one because I was running uh, squigs as dogs. Okay. And I, want, I wanted an extra dog just for, just so I could use more squigs. Hey. And there was like a lot of discussion on how exactly the kennels worked because everybody was either going for the kennels or the one that gives you a reroll on your injury roll. Oh right, uh, the yeah, the hospital. Well, it's not yeah, the hospital. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, it's good to have that money sink because it, it, once you start selling things off, once you get like magic items you can't use, it can be quite easy to amass a good bit of cash. Yes. No. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 at the beginning of the of the campaign, I find that you definitely hold on to more bits and pieces, uh, mm-hmm. and sometimes you sit there and you think, oh, uh, actually. I've um, not gotten any money to buy a, somebody to replace the thief or the or the whatever. You know, I want a new specialist or a, a better soldier or something like that. Yeah. And and you struggle between you know, um, do I sell off the my treasure that's good, or um, do I keep hold of it and you know and use it for in in the combat? So, but it's like you said, but as you that goes on and you gain more and more and more uh, mm-hmm. bits and pieces you know it's like well no i'll sell all that off so it's a happy days so uh, and you get that money to go and do the requirements so yeah yeah because uh, i'm adding up all the purchase price it, is, it should come up to about two thousand gold which would be just off the top of my head a good two months of playing yeah, with really good roles, yeah. yeah so this is this is your long term money sink for the campaign progression, mm-hmm. and that would about cover it for what you can spend your gold on. I mean, besides all the uh, the equipment, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The equipment is actually quite expensive if you want to like go home and buy it, uh, yeah. as opposed to just rolling for it on the treasure tables. Yeah. No, like definitely. a staff of power three is five hundred gold pieces. Wow! Well. Yeah, yeah, and that's mm-hmm. that's probably you know if you've had a really good game, that's that might be one game's worth of gold. But I would yeah. say it's probably two or three games worth 
on, 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 <laughs> yeah. if if you've had a sort of standard game. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, that would be most of the progression for gold. Uh, going back to XP, there is also, you, you have the ability to buff your spells as you go. Because you start off with a set amount of spells, not that many. Uh, a few from your like your subcategories of your wizard's uh, spells, and a couple of really reliable ones from your main categories. Now, as you progress, you can choose to either buff up your main ones, mm -hmm. or you can choose to get more spells. Yes. Now, it's usually, from a mechanical standpoint, a good idea to buff up your main ones to the point where they are super reliable, so, just so you have like a main attack button, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. And also a good way to just get XP, because spells do generate XP in this game. Yes. Yeah. And then, as you go along, you can expand your repertoire. There's ways to get spells outside of your schools, using the scrolls, I believe. Yes, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Scrolls up for that, so yeah. Yeah, because this is also like... The, the stats at a certain level, because you can level up your stats as well, yes. will not be as useful as having more spells. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I mean, for me, I've still, I mean, I sit there and stick with my, because you say, it says in the rules, you can't get rid of a grimoire unless, you know, because the wizard never does that, unless mm -hmm. you've already got, already got the spell. Uh, but I end yeah. up, usually sort of picking up most of the ones that I may add only one or two spells on the way up through my progression uh, I yeah. find um, and then I just got a lot of grimoires that I can't sell because I haven't got the official spell or yeah. if, we, if we stick to the rules because mm -hmm. I want those you know we go back to what we said we want the casting number to be high uh yeah yeah uh well, low so we can get a high casting you know get a good casting off and uh, make sure that we get those spells off so that, that's that's my preference anyway so yeah you pick up, you pick up a lot of grimoires and uh not necessarily use them because especially <laughs> if they're out out of um out of your uh casting and you're uh, picking up something that gives you a 14 or 16. I don't see the point in it. Yeah. I, I remember getting a lot of elemental spells and I could not cast them. And I quite, can't quite remember if this was the first game where we'd house rule being able to just sell grimoires. That might have been the second game. All uh, right. Okay. But for the second game, I had a lot more money on me. So it might not have been the case for the first game. Okay. But yeah, I do remember just ending up with like maybe a five spell core. Yeah. yeah. With two or three that I used really extensively. Yeah, no, that's that's what I've done so far personally. Mm -hmm. So with my necromancer and my uh summoner. So yeah, I just sort of uh, it, I, I suppose it depends on how you play the game. Uh, mm -hmm. if you if you if you're going into uh, get in and out you and, and get the XP like you said and you mining XP to to get up to the next level etc and keep going you know I, I don't like sitting I'm sitting there casting and the lower they are the more XP is is, is I'm going to get because it's just easier for yeah. me to do uh not necessarily always an interesting game but mm -hmm. uh it depends what the other player's doing <laughs> I think <laughs> <laughs> it's Cool, because when you go play Ghost Archipelago, you see those like uh, quirks in the design addressed quite directly oh, by okay. the new Heritor system. Like, you, you, I'm pretty sure you can't farm like spell casts in Ghost Archipelago in the same way you can in Base Frostgrave. Okay, it's like it's very interested in doing something completely different within the same context. All right, so. Cool. For the second game, we actually did like a crossover for uh, we could run either Heritor or Wizard. All oh, right, okay. And, and that that worked surprisingly well, all things considered. Yeah. Uh, the systems for Heritor and Wizard are quite different. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've not played played, played Ghosts yet, so mm -hmm. uh, that's quite interesting that they because I knew that it was a quite a, there was quite a bit of a difference in the rule base, but I suppose the stats and everything are the same, so. Yeah, it's just uh, the spells and all that sort of stuff work slightly different. So, that's, but 
it merges well, does it? So that's quite interesting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because the core of it is pretty much the same. Uh, yeah. From our progression standpoint, one of the main changes is making your baseline minions free. Your thugs in uh, in Frostgrave and your uh, crew in Ghost Archipelago, I believe. Crewman? Okay. Crewman? Yeah. Yeah, crewman. All right. So I think Frostgrave 2E as a whole is also, also gone with that. Just making the basic thug free to replenish and you have to pay for your specialists. Okay. Because, yeah, that is a good way to stop the player from losing too much money from just having really bad injury rolls on yeah. what's basically expendable units. Yeah, no, absolutely. I've, yeah, I've, um, yeah, it, it's just, a, it's just annoying because, you know, inevitably you can uh, probably lose you know, one or two characters every two or three games, I would say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if not more, depending on, on if how bad your dice rolling is. But yeah, mm -hmm. so, and then if you've, because of the swingy nature of the whole D20 thing, it's, uh, yeah. it, it can be off-putting for some people, I reckon, uh, I would have thought. Oh, yeah. You know, you start mm -hmm. invest. Uh, I'm kind of probably the same. If I start investing in a warband and I'm attached to, you know, Bob over there because I've spent half my XP on making yeah. my, my crew member quite really good and then he dies very easily. It's gonna, uh -huh. I'm going to go, hmm, this isn't good. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bad feel, as I like to say. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. I think, um, yeah, I, I always, you know, it's like, I always say it's like when you get a, a total uh, kill in D&D &D or something like that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've seen... I used to play AD and D, so there was none uh -huh. of this reviving and all that sort of stuff back in the day. It's like, and I've seen a whole you, yeah, eleven, level ten and eleven uh, character group get uh -huh. all like killed, and everybody's yeah. like, right, <laughs> okay, so you want us to start again? Yeah, <laughs> the the attachment issues that go right on there. So I can see why, yeah, it, it's a good way mm -hmm. of, uh, of dealing with it. So yeah. Yeah, in one of our campaigns, I believe it was the second one, we had uh, William, who was running the whole thing. His his wizard fell down, because we were running his uh, his own home route scenarios. His, his wizard fell a great distance, ended up getting knocked out by that fall, <laughs> and then ended up dying on oh, a reroll on a death. So they were like, yeah, he, he's died for real. <laughs> oh, he no. died on the reroll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he just we, ends up rolling up on a completely new one. We just like, okay, just take half of what you had, just so you don't get completely left behind. Yeah, I think that's the problem. We we're play, <laughs> we're playing Stargrave at the at the club at the moment, uh, and mm -hmm. somebody suggested that we had a uh, the the captain can't die. He can be injured, but he can't die. Mm -hmm. um, I I yeah, I got behind that because I've you know I lost a, a wizard. He yeah, was, uh, you know he's like level eight and i've got right really and my opponent while i was playing you know he's got a level eight as well and i'm like i'm gonna go back to one i know there's leveling there's leveling up and all that though, but i just feel that it's not uh i don't think it's it does a, that good a job at leveling up so yeah a little bit of a house rule on wizards never die they're just uh badly injured so mm. Because some people do like the stakes. Some people enjoy playing campaigns yeah, yeah, yeah. with the stakes on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, definitely. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I'd probably sulk a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people would, for sure. <laughs> really? Okay. You want me to do it again? Right, okay. I suppose it depends how far you get into it. If you've been playing in a th three-month campaign or something like that, yeah. and you're getting close to the end, and, it, and your wizard dies... Yeah, you might be really. It's like okay, really, this is gonna happen. As if you got, <laughs> you know, you're playing through one of the books or something. Uh huh. It's gonna throw you back and make the job so much more harder to to win. So, but yeah, that, that's actually making me curious to go back to looking at the uh, Rangers of Shadow Deep because that is a solo system that does it's... run off Frostgrave's rules. I cannot remember how it chose to handle uh, character death. Uh. I have the book 
somewhere uh, near me, but I can't find it. I can't. Uh, no, they just die, don't they? I'm just sure. Yeah, they yeah, die. Yeah, because yeah. that would work a bit better for like the tone that Shadow Deep was trying to set, because Shadow yeah. Deep is quite bleak, quite bleak compared to Frost Wave. Yeah, yeah, and no, I'm pretty sure they just you just die. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I, I, I ran I through the tutorial where, of that. Yeah, I don't know where my I don't know where my book is right now. It was, uh, that's why. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty it. sure if you die, you die. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, but that's not so much of a pressure point because I don't think you're playing against somebody, uh, mm -hmm. even if you're with um, you know you, you're playing with friends in Shadow Deep. You're you know they're going to be a. I don't know, level 10 or something, and you go back to level one. They're all on your <laughs> side. So you're not going to, so, yeah. you know, and you're going to feed off the experience. Cause, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, quicker. So you, you're you going to bump it up quicker and, and they can protect you. So I think when you're playing a competitive, and I use that word very lightly and i'm not saying it's competitive game but when you're playing against a friend you know they've got that competitive yeah. edge to th something you know but it's uh it's when adversarial feel, yeah as opposed to yeah, that's a yeah. good yeah i like that word um mm. yeah so when it's like that i think you know there's that that inane sort of like well that seems a bit unfair i'm a level one yeah level 10 mm -hmm. or a level 12 you know is this gonna make this too difficult and uh, i don't want to play again and there's That's that true. there's that whole uh, um, rule. What game am I? Uh, and it's like that. If you don't win every, a game in one every four or something, you start becoming disinterested. Yeah. So if uh, that's pretty something that happens as well, I don't, I don't know because it's never really it never really happened to yeah, that badly. With our, with our frost wave games, we play with like maybe five people tops oh, across wow. the campaign, and yeah. everybody would play all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, compare that to when I tried to run a Necromanda campaign. Well, I actually did run it. We ran it for also about four, three months. Okay. We started with twenty-four people for the wow. that Necromanda campaign. By That's the cool. end, we were down to six, because people okay. were just falling off. Because like one guy I fought, I just blasted, yeah. uh, like his command with a shotgun yeah. blast, and I ended up killing two of them, and he yeah. just dropped the game right there. He was yeah. like, "Yeah, this is not good. I would rather play something else." Because Necromunda yeah. is one of those super high stakes systems that okay. it's part of the design, it's part of the the tone of the game as well. Right. Okay. With yeah. Frostgrave, it is a lot less apparent. Yeah, I, I, I suppose the problem we've got there, you know, if you're progressing through that campaign, is again, you, I don't know. I've not played Necromunda since nineteen something or other nineteen. 90 or whatever it is but uh -huh. a long time ago and i can't remember <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm coming from very old memories mm -hmm. but I, I, if i remember rightly you could get a gang and it could start running away the, with the game and nobody wants to and nobody wants to play against that team yeah 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 it's like well it's obvious he's going to win mm -hmm. uh, exactly. so why do i want to play this in this campaign anymore and mm -hmm. i get that and uh, yeah I really do get that, and it can be a bit annoying. It is vastly annoying. You need to say, "Well, yeah, I'm mm. gonna play, gonna go and play Jim. I'm gonna lose against <laughs> yeah. Jim because Jim's uh -huh. got X, Y, and Z and his amazing characters and all this sort of stuff." Yeah, and, and it, it can, yeah. It's like, well, what's the point? I'm not gonna, I can't, I can't get to the top of the ladder. Cause I don't think yeah. any war gamer plays uh, a war game to come along and uh, lose. Well, oh, if they do, not, yeah. I don't. If, I, if they do, they can come and play me because <laughs> I make a I make a change. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't lose that much. I do. I don't know. About half the and time. <laughs> interesting to come back to the the swinginess of the system because yes, Frostwave has this quality where you you make your models touch. <laughs> They're gonna fight. It could go either way. Uh huh. Uh, like in in my second game, I was running a Heritor. It was an orc. It was one of the savage orc, the GW savage orcs. Yeah. So I'd spec them out to be all offense, no defense, and it would be all right for him to die. So most of the time I would just yeet him right into the other leader. And when he would touch him, it would be just like the highest stakes roll imaginable. 
Because even if I rolled a one, uh, rather, even with all the 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 stats I'd stacked up on him, yeah. if I rolled a one, it meant nothing. <laughs> he would drop on the spot. And... So it was a very interesting way to play. Uh... And with a that like the mitigation for the deaths i could play him super recklessly yeah. like i had the hospital i had like uh the the, the hierator feats that would stop him from dying so often yes. so yeah it, it gives you it's good it gives you lots of options yeah no no def- it, definitely it gives your opponent a really interesting game as well yeah yeah, yeah. no that i think mm-hmm. that's the key with it is you know you see somebody roll a 20 and you say like oh. <laughs> And then you roll one. It's like, hey, and or then yeah. you roll, you roll a two, and you go, well, <laughs> yep, that's me toast. Mm-hmm. But then they roll a four, and it's like, uh, but then, like you said, you know, what somebody rolls a one, somebody rolls a twenty, mm-hmm. you know, they got a critical, they've got, uh, you know, they got a plus two damage. This, you could, you could just, you see the numbers go up, and you go, yep, he's gonna be dead. Yep, <laughs> off he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I suppose it takes how you take it. I mean, sometimes it's just th- thematically it can be hilarious. Yes, yeah. like, you like yeah. everybody's. It's like I've won this game, and as you're running off the board, all of a sudden, you know, somebody uh-huh. casts an uh, elemental bolt and it's one <laughs> down, and then there's a grenade goes off, and then dum ba dum, and you're like, hang on, how's this happened? <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah. it does, it gives you that op- the, yeah the that, mm-hmm. those those combat system does give you that swinginess and it's not always uh, set in stone uh, and I mm-hmm. like that I like the uh, I play at a, another game called Burrows and Badgers I don't know if you've heard of that um, oh yeah uh, I've seen that yeah so you have like massive bulldogs and badgers and stuff like that who've got uh, various excellent stats then you have a mouse. But the way they the way they get around it is that you get a plus seven if you always you have your die for combat it's from a d4 yeah. to a d12 uh-huh right, and you can take it up to a d20 but uh-huh. if i roll a mouse with a d4 and mm-hmm. i get a four uh-huh. i get plus seven to it all the time oh, so yeah. that makes a 13. now if i'm a bulldog i might have a d8 or a d10 but mm-hmm. if i roll a two the mouse gets through and it kills me. Yeah, you know, it's, it's damaging you. So I like that. I don't want. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I don't want. I don't want a beast that can only be killed by another beast. I want. I want the little bloke to be able to do something. I want the, th- and that's why I love imps because, after t- most of the time they aren't, don't really do a lot apart from annoy people. But then yeah. you roll a twenty and there the guy rolls. <laughs> Yeah, a, a two, and you go. Uh, yep, that imp just ripped your uh, captain's head off. <laughs> uh-huh. I have seen that happen way too many times. It's like, oh, it's just an imp. It gets like what plus one fight. Yeah, yep. and then you actually roll and it just murder something with a really good armor set on. <laughs> yes, yeah, my oppo- my opponent actually was good, uh, sort of uh, suggested he was a bit fed up with me just flinging imps around. So. <laughs> I I kind of changed my play with him because uh, I was playing in the campaign, which is two of us. So I changed my play with him and started using a few different other spells just so I didn't disinterest him in the campaign. So, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which yeah, was, there, there know, is an element of that. Yeah, definitely. yeah, mm-hmm. and he and you know it's sort of I, I I think I played one game where I only cast one or two, um, and actually he won. And mm-hmm. he, he became happy again, and uh, we off again, went off again. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't. But it, I didn't I won every single game with just fly, firing imps around. You know, he's won his fair share of games with a load of archers and throwing bloody elemental fireballs around, and you know, uh, grenades and stuff. So taking me out. So it swings around about, doesn't it? Mm, definitely. Literally swings around about. <laughs> Like given that I do really like how the critical hits are explicitly an optional rule. Yes. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, people absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Some people do not jive with that instant kill on the twenty. No, no, no. And that's cool mm-hmm. too. And you and it's you know, it's like the um injured rule. You don't have to play it. It's a, it's an yeah. optional rule. You know, yeah. uh, we don't play the injured rule in my Frostgrave, but I do play it in well actually Stargrave it is a thing, so but um that's cool, but we do use the critical role, so yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's neither here nor there. 
I think we could probably go on for a bit longer, actually, but we're going to move on because we've been talking for quite a while now around uh, progression. Um, so we're going to move on to our next part of the uh, conversation. And mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed that, so thank you. Oh, good. Uh, so next we are going to be. Talking about our life lost what we're going to talk about so so do you have it in front uh, of you <laughs> we are talking about wizard spells schools uh, and... yeah wizard schools yes so thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> do you know when you have that moment you're trying to get the mouse to click <laughs> that was yeah. dead people mm -hmm. be, be looking embarrassed i'm gonna have to write scripts up and stuff like that i don't know <laughs> so wizards yes so uh what's your what is your favorite uh my favorite one from a yes. thematic perspective would be the chronomancer because i just okay. like the idea of the time control yeah, that's yeah, always yeah. something that is like okay i want to do time control it's a really cool theme how do i do this mechanically without it being very silly yeah, so yeah. It, and it usually translates to debuffs buffs and yes. debuffs yes like haste and slow that's that's your most default time control spell now with Frostgrave, what did Frostgrave do with it? It mostly does the same thing. Let's have a look. Yeah, so uh, the Chronomancer in Frostgrave deals with debuffs as well as buffs. It also plays with movement speed, it which does. is actually something that can be quite strong in Frostgrave, a game wherein you are competitively shopping for loot. Yes, because uh, like I know one of the one of the meta builds, so to speak, that second edition addressed was the the bounce, the jump rule, the leap yes. rule, perhaps. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. The leap spell, because yeah, I've had the person who was just running up and using leap over and over on their fastest unit, and they were just running off with all the treasure. Yeah, it's yeah. not super a good time, but yeah. No, no, and that's you know. It's like all games you can break them from mm -hmm. if you can see the if you can see yeah. the floor. And yep. it's good it was good to see that get fixed. So yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, personally I, I I thematically I'm a necromancer. I don't mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I have to say, uh just because I don't really play it in many other games. Uh I, yeah. never, I was never really big into it when I was playing back in the day I used to play Warhammer. Uh, fantasy role play and D and D, you know, they were always the bad guys. Uh, and I, most of the time, uh, when I'm playing, so I play obviously I play a lot of Oathmark. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't got an undead the necromancers. So, you know, mm. they're not the good guys. But um, <laughs> yeah, they it, it doesn't. You don't get that feeling. They're not. They, you know, they do control the dead, but da 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 da. da. You know, and you get fell stat. Uh, they did had the undead, you know, the servants and all that sort of stuff. So it's not, it's not demonic armies roaming around, sort of eating, taking everybody's souls. But uh, mm -hmm. obviously they can still do things, but they're not in the same. I don't get that feel from it thematically that they're sort of this like, you know, doom lit. They just use the power of magic to use um, lifeless uh, bodies to do their bidding. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I like uh, who doesn't love a zombie though? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, and uh, the game does give you the option to control undead, which wasn't a spell I took, but in like in something like the upcoming campaign, which features vampires, yes, that might be something to actually uh, consider taking and investing into heavily. Yeah, because if you're definitely. rolling like high level undead on the table most of the time, then the ability to just say, okay, you're gonna do this. It's quite good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in my uh, in my Ghost Archipelago adjacent campaign, I had uh, the similar summoner class as well, which was uh, the beast class summoner class. But okay. I didn't summon; I just opted to control, and that was really fun. Like a T Rex wanders, and you say, "Okay, the T Rex goes towards you," <laughs> and I would I would spam the uh, the incantation that would make it so the creatures just constantly wandered onto the table. That was oh, right. a very, very fun warband to run. That sounds like really quite cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have and the, uh, Go on. Uh, the people I were playing with were also really grateful for it because we ended up using a lot of their miniatures all the time. 
that's because they painted up so many animals yeah. for Frostgrave, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got, yeah, well, that's kind of why we use the uh, every turn roll it, roll to see what turns up uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rule, not just when you open a treasure, because uh, yeah. I think it, it brings two things to the game. I know we're rabbit holing here a little bit, but it brings, it brings the fact that uh, it's not just me and you on the table if you roll under 10 for the whole game, but like you said, I get to use my white ape or my zombie uh, troll mm -hmm. or my troll or you know my blood bats or the that I've bought and painted because yeah yeah it's nothing worse than having you know looking at one figure and never using it again. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It, yeah, it's like, have you ever used your ape? Nope. Because uh, <laughs> we haven't never done rolled it. it. Yeah, yeah, never rolled it. But yeah, no, that's because. There was one I haven't used it yet. Uh, uh, it was the 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 Beastmaster in Frostgrave from the Breeding Pits. I don't know, uh, uh, and I should have got that up, but I haven't got the supplement up. But uh, mm -hmm. I, have you have you played against that or played with that at all? Uh not yet. I do think somebody ran it in one of our. Uh, games right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, we should read about that, and then uh, uh -huh. when we review some of the, uh, we should review the campaign books. I decided that. Yeah, we they're very talk, interesting. We, mm -hmm. we can talk all about them. Oh, I think that'd be a really cool idea. Um, so yeah, I don't. So we'll we'll leave that subject right there because neither of us know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. But so, do you think there's a? Uh, I mean, we go through the wizard schools, and we're not. Yeah, you know, I certainly, uh, I don't think you are saying, uh, let's the uh, the best, the best. Goal. Th that's uh, a really hard goal. Yeah. That is a really hard goal. If you what? just want to like shoot things, go for elementalist for yes. sure. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think it's. Yeah, I see a lot of that. I see a lot of the elementalist. I have to say, mm -hmm. uh, I think that seems to be a favorite amongst the people I played. Um, and at the club uh, as well, um, and they are bringing that along just because some of the spells are really good. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's it's of a playing type. Uh, but yeah, so that's the, that's one I would say. I, whether it's the best one, but it's certainly got the the bolt and yeah, which is the, the know, exploding one. Yeah. It's it's very much the fireball wizard build, so it it's it's quite that attractive because that is a fun build to play. Uh, I remember I... cooking up a sigilist. I'm looking at the sigilist rules right now. I remember making one of these, but not going through with them because they're interesting. Because their power is uh, runes. Their power is writing on the things. Yes. They have a spell called furious quill where they they chuck a quill at their opponent. It's it's quite a good uh, spell set here. Ah, yeah. uh, Soothsayer. This one was a... Yeah, I've never done that. Uh, this No, this one isn't the healer one. No, oh, it's no. Maybe the healer. Soothsayer is super support heavy, I remember. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I mean, I've not played against the Soothsayer or mm -hmm. seen anybody play it yet, so uh, it's quite interesting. I was hoping that you might have seen I... it. I... Had someone cast the wizard eye and then shoot fireballs out of it. All right, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, it's very magic <laughs> the gathering when you mix and match like that. All right, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then obviously summoner. Uh, it's, I I would say I like the summoner because of him because of control demon because uh -huh. I can cast demon. You know, summon demon starts at twelve. You can bring that down really rapidly. Um, and you also um, get leap as well. So um, a plague of insects isn't too bad either. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's quite fun one, to, especially if your opponent's uh, a fan of long range shooting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just uh, blast that. I remember. I remember poison dart getting a lot of mileage for my game. Like yes. that got surprisingly strong when I gave it a few upgrades. Because then yeah. I was casting it at like eight, and it was pretty easy to cast. And you'd yeah. get it off, and it would deal quite a bit of damage, and also have poison on it. Yeah, yeah, no, no that's that's a, quite a useful one. Obviously, that's necromantic. And uh, yeah, so I mean, that's definitely uh, it's not poison dart switch, isn't it? Sorry, it's uh, yes, it's switch. It's, I, I lied. <laughs> it's like your only directly offensive spell in the witch. The witch, yes, yeah. yeah. 
No, no, definitely. Obviously, you could put, I mean, you got the brew, 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 brew potion, which is a mm-hmm. lot of out of game. You've got animal companion, which is a lot of out of game. So it's more of a, um, yeah, mud. And yeah. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of bits and pieces you can try and do to stop the other player from doing, getting anywhere close to the treasure and that sort of stuff. So, um, and um, bring in, debuffing them. Uh, uh-huh. I remember for my first game, I asked for a retcon because I had taken Animal Companion, I had taken Brew Potion, I had taken Familiar, and the only thing I was casting was Curse, and I wasn't casting it well All right. like, in the game, and that was just absolutely gimping me. As I, like, I was like, guys, can I can I reroll my spells, please? And they're like, sure, sure, that's fine. <laughs> you have not gone for the optimal build in this case. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have. I've not. I, I have to say, it's it's another one of those ones I've just looked at. And went, mm, yep, I'm not gonna play that. I might take poison. <laughs> might take poison dart as, a, as something from one other than the wizard, but no, mm-hmm. not, not gonna be my main thing. And then you got the um, the one I can't ever pronounce. So, uh, thaumaturge. Thaumaturge. Is that how you pronounce it? Excellent. Let's I think it one. is. Who cares? <laughs> the one. Thamaturge, yes, Thamaturge. Thom, thom. Uh, this is the healer one. This yeah, is the healer. Yeah, one. he's a he's a healer. Yeah, definitely. So uh, and uh, I think um, you got destroy undead, which is a you know it's a handy yeah. little spell. Obviously, you got heal, which uh, let's be honest, uh, is quite useful. <laughs> yeah, especially it starts at eight. So. Eight at eight, yeah, and it's five five points on demand basically, and you get XP every time you cast it. Yeah, there's very little reason not to take this if you go th- thaumaturge. No, none at all. Uh, mm-hmm. Shield um, is very good as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember somebody just making one of their models nigh unkillable because uh, with a combination of shield and heal, pretty much. I was about to say, just you shield. And then you heal, shield, and heal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as, as they're running up, it's just not going to be able to kill them quick enough. So yeah, that's no, definitely. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, there's lots of. I mean, I like I, I like the way that the whole of the you know we we, we we'll get into it in another episode, uh-huh. but how you can you you get to mix and match up all of those. Uh, yeah. spells and you don't just say well i'm an elementalist so i have all the elementalist spells mm-hmm. That's, I, I like that uh i think it also takes that edge away about somebody playing every you know everybody saying well this class is the best class wizard so everybody turns up with the chromancer for a day you know what i mean so yeah yeah i think you know, i'm going to be an enchanter and it's like well why wouldn't i be the enchanter because this is the we didn't talk about illusionists, but illusionists are out there as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, I've uh, they've got some. His visibility is a really good spell, actually. Uh, it's quite annoying. You cast that onto a yeah, 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 a thief and just put him one inch away from a treasure, <laughs> and and do nothing other than just stand there. And uh, it's like mm-hmm. uh, you can't take the treasure. Uh, you can't take the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Fight me! <laughs> uh, I don't think I want to. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, just reading through it—that is absolutely something you could do. That oh yeah, yeah definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and if you've got, you know, if you can see the treasure, you teleport. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Invisibility, teleport. <laughs> it's like no. Yeah, that's true. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and, 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 it. That's what all those different spells are about. Is you're trying to build up a combination of them to make your wizard really useful uh, and mm-hmm. be able to do some interesting things around the table. So uh, uh, you know you, you don't have to keep it to there. So if you had a shield and a, a teleport, obviously you can shield somebody up and teleport them into into action, and they get that plus two and etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah, yeah it's it's another layer of uh, player expression just being able to build a very specific wizard yes i'm reading fool's gold i remember taking fool's gold this was a very fun spell <laughs> yes four inches yeah this is a little bit different from the first edition one the first edition one had like a a dummy talk yeah, on yeah, the yeah. table here you go uh, yeah move it up to four inches of that yeah that's that would be quite annoying <laughs> that played against me, but that looks really annoying. 
Yeah, yeah, but no. It, so yeah, I mean, it was a quick overview of the Wizard Schools, but that's what's out there. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see any new ones in the uh, uh, supplement. Yeah, I think we are. I may be wrong. Uh, I'm sure I saw something about it, but uh, yeah, we'll have to wait for the book to turn up and have a look, I suppose. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I know the old supplements, of which there are many, did have yeah. some uh, some custom spell schools in there, some yes. new spell schools. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, um, and like the breeding pits has got um, the animal, mm -hmm. the beast masters in there as well. So uh, I haven't read, the, I haven't got that far enough to do the, is there, is there new summoning? Is this new something in the in the last supplement as well? I mm -hmm. think so. Yeah, I think there is. So yeah, they got and and obviously if you got spellcaster, there's bits and pieces in there as well. Um, if I remember rightly, three or four's got the has got a whole new school in there. Yes, I'm sure it does. Sweet. The, yeah. So for the uh, reindeer men. Well, I've forgotten the name off <laughs> my head, but you know who I'm on about. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. I know it's it's Friday. It's been a long day for me, and I'm tired, and my brain doesn't sometimes doesn't work. <laughs> there is a lot of frostgrave stuff spread there across is, a lot of frostgrave. There is <laughs> there is a lot of stuff, and then you, and then we try not to cross populate it with Stargrave, Gross Archipelago, Oathmark. <laughs> Silver Bay in it, <laughs> and all of other Joe's excellent games, Rangers as well, and because uh, mm -hmm. uh, I I do it. I'm sorry, I'm rabbit holing again, but I do it all the time. I'm playing Stargrave, and I'm going, but yeah, yeah, yeah but you got to do that. And they go, no, 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 no. The rules change. <laughs> that's like, I go, oh, yeah, 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 that's Frostgrave. Yeah. <laughs> in Stargrave, if you in combat and it's a draw, mm -hmm. both of you get hit. So, uh -huh. so. Uh, uh, which is the same in Rangers, isn't it? So uh, if it's a draw, you both clang. Cool. Yeah, you both. Yeah, clang. I believe if it goes through your if it goes through your armor. So mm -hmm. uh, still, so yeah. But yeah, cool, excellent. So yes, we are going to move on to uh, the ten question game. Sure. So, are you ready for this fun sure. pack field? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do is get my stopwatch ready and uh -huh. I am going to get out. So we're not going to do spells because we just did that kind of thing. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully I won't slow you down uh, uh -huh. and we will go through and I shall uh, ask some questions. Hopefully they, they'll be easy and then yeah. we'll get a time on that. Uh, and if we get other guests, we're gonna. I'm gonna try them. But if it's just me and you, then you're just gonna have to try and compete. Or then you <laughs> will get you to ask me and da 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 da. da. But yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, okay. So first, I'm gonna start ready, and we're off. So, uh, if your spell has A on it, what does that mean? Oh uh, my gosh. If your spell has A on it, it is an attack? I'm not too sure. Uh, it's an out of game spell. Ah, out of game, of course. Of yeah, course. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if I, what's the maximum uh, experience level I can get as a wizard in one game? In one game, I think it is 300. I Correct. definitely. 300. Ah, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Like, no, that's a ghost archipelago one. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, if you want to and um, that's too difficult uh what does what are the what's the money called and we know it's gold but what is the actual full name for it in frostgrave gold coins gc gold crowns uh, crowns of yeah. course mm -hmm. okay next question uh we are going to get a bottle of something and it helps us um move through directly through terrain it's a potion what could that be Shadow walk potion. Uh, we're gonna Shade go underneath. Walk? We're gonna go underneath it. Ah, oh my gosh! Borrowing potion. Of it is. Borrowing? It is. It's <laughs> of just, just, I cannot uh, believe I remembered that. that. That's that's cool. Okay, uh, we were talking about it earlier, and you've got it sitting in your thing, and you're nearly dead. What do you want to be drinking? A potion of elixir of life. That's it. All. Is it is yeah. <laughs> uh, and then okay, so the next question is. Uh, Potion of toughness. What does it give you? 
plus one to your armor save for it the does. one battle. That's correct. Okay. Uh, so we've got a wand of light. What does that do? It lets you cast, I believe, the light spell once per battle. It gives you a uh, ability to roll two dice when attempting uh -huh. cast a spell. So I'm giving you really difficult ones here, I feel. Sorry. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just literally just picking them out of uh, the air. Uh, I have an inn. What does that give me in my base? The inn gives you... Oh, gosh, is it more minion slots? More follower slots? Yeah, it gives you an extra soldier in your warband. I'll give you, That's right. Give you mm -hmm. that. Okay. Uh, how much does a kennel cost? Uh, 250. 400. 400, my gosh. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, I'm going to give you two more. Uh, wizard, no. So the wizard, I've, I've lost it now, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes, so uh, we'll leave it there because I've lost it. <laughs> and I think, right, right. yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many I did either. So hopefully that was somewhere there. Uh, that was a bit rubbish. What I am going to have to do <laughs> is write them up beforehand and not make it up as I go along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just getting prepared. I, I always used mm -hmm. just to sit, sit to Chris. It's like, oh, yeah, you're always doing everything last minute. and did, did, did. I can see why now. Uh, well, he didn't, no, he still did it last minute. This is <laughs> this is re being recorded two weeks before we're going to release it. So uh, uh, <laughs> that was an interesting uh, thought exercise because, like the way war games are, they're they're on a book. They tend to not commit things to memory, and yeah, it was yeah. interesting to see how much stuff was popping up in my brain when you were asking those questions. Well, what we'll do is when we when I edit this, I will. You were at three minutes, so we'll mm -hmm. we'll leave we'll limit the game to three minutes. And we'll see how many questions we can get right instead of uh, sure. how many questions we can get uh, ten questions that we can get right in three minutes. So okay. we'll beat our time. Yeah. We'll go from there. From a, mm -hmm. uh, we'll use that as a baseline. I feel <laughs> sweet. That's fine. Cool. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you've listened to us before, but. Uh, Chris introduced uh, a, a segment of the. Uh, it's at the end. It's the silly question. Question. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, my silly question for you is: You are a barbarian, but not the ones from Frostgrave. You uh -huh. are a barbarian from where Conan comes from, and you walk <laughs> into Felstead. What's the first thing you are doing? What is the first thing I am doing? And I am a Conan barbarian. Yes. And that's funny because I've been playing Conan Exiles like literally uh, five bars ago. Uh, oh, so the first thing I would be doing would probably be looking for an animal to make <laughs> into a coat. Because those Conan barbarians, they like wearing them animals. Yes, they definitely <laughs> do. And uh, if we're going from the... Uh, Schwarzenegger film, he pretty much only wear a pair of pants, uh, or as you, I don't know what Americans call them, shorts, isn't it, or something. Like that. But uh, yeah, a pair of pants, so I've made out of small loincloth. So I definitely would be going to look for the nearest ape or furry <laughs> thing to slaughter it, or a person yes. maybe. Who's got... it would be it would be quite cold in fact then. <laughs> I think it's going to be a bit chilly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he got there without noticing it was cold as he walked up there. Maybe he got you know. Some sort of uh, uh, ultimate universe, uh, 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 alternative universe spell dropped him in there. But yeah, so <laughs> step into a spell portal as you do. Yes, well, lots been, of wizards in Frostwave. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. I've been looking for barbarians to uh, play in Oathmark and in uh, in, in Frostgrave. Uh, and they don't cross. They definitely don't cross. You can't because I want some of the old school uh, metal uh -huh. ones that uh, oh, they are out yeah. there, but they are all basically naked. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, they don't really work for some. Yeah, they're not going to work. So, I well, some of my favourite figures are the actual Frostgrave barbarians as well. Actually, I really mm. do like them. Uh, on my my whole warband is um, actually uh, barbarians. 
Yeah. So you, uh, I use all yeah, of them. I've been considering that kit. I've been considering that kit and the cultist kit. It's just the uh, shipping to New Zealand is uh, atrocious at the moment. Is it? Yeah, e even within New Zealand. I have a package from Kapiti, which is just like a few clicks downwards, and it's taken a month to get here. It's not even wow. here. <laughs> wow. It's, it's a little bit outside Auckland. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's, mm -hmm. that's worse than South African um, mail, and that's pretty bad. Uh, I've I, got a package from Japan coming at the, at the same time, some Napoleonic <laughs> bottles from Japan, and wow. I bet they will they will arrive before that package. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> They've just sacked all the postmen in New Zealand or something. Then <laughs> it's just super clogged up because uh, we're going into Christmas and everybody's ordering online. Uh, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Understandable as it gets crazy bonkers here so mm -hmm. uh, i solve that by not buying any buddy any bugger any presents because i don't like anybody no it's not true you know. <laughs> i just uh, print presents for people currently yeah, it's that's much good. easier uh, at the moment yeah uh, yeah i don't i'm not sure that yeah i'm not sure i get away with it but uh, amazon's my friend for when, when it comes to that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. so yeah, just can't, yeah no christmas Mm -hmm. it's, it's good for toys, but my <laughs> toys, not anybody else's. <laughs> anyway, we digress, we digress. I would like to really thank you, Sal. Uh, I really enjoyed doing that episode. Uh, I hope the listeners had a, enjoyed it, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, it was a very fun, uh, very interesting experience. This is the first time I've ever been on a podcast. Uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, what the view, what the listeners can't see is that we can see each other. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm sitting in my pants and Sal's uh, <laughs> got an umbrella up. No, he hasn't. And I'm not definitely in my pants. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's been fantastic. Uh, so I'm really glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, so, mm -hmm. guys, thanks for listening. Uh, come back uh, in a month's time. Uh, we'll have some more. Um, we are talking about maybe doing more. Uh, it depends how much you like it, I suppose. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you want more, uh, if you want more, ping us on when we want to post this up. You know, if you want us to talk about a subject, uh, let us know. That'd be great, and uh, we'll try and cover it uh, with our with our knowledge. And if we don't, maybe you come on and be a guest too. Uh, we can have a two or three week discussion, which we've done before on Oathwire. That'd be great. Okay, so I will say uh, good night, uh, good evening, and good morning, wherever you are.